Hi guys, so I am in short positions on Great British Pound Euro Stellar. It's uh, the 9th of July 2024, and I thought I'd just do this quick video talking through the conferences that I used in order to get my positions in. I'm holding one or two positions from yesterday. Um, so I held them overnight into London and now we're in New York. And I've been adding more in London and in uh, New York sessions as well. So I've been scaling in, knowing that we were getting the reversal. Um, for those of you that are already in the course and mentorship, I did mention on the mentorship call yesterday that I was looking for the reversal using the monthly chart as my uh, key area of interest. And then it's just a case of... Um, finding extra conferences with all the other charts in order to get positions in the market. So um, anyway, let's jump into this. Many of you I know might be watching this for the first time, uh, not familiar with the tools that I use. If you're coming from a retail trader's perspective and you're only used to using um, outdated retail lagging indicators or um, naked candlestick charts, well, hopefully this video will help you give you a little introduction into the institutional tools that I use, which allow me to get real time data um, on the charts and allow me to uh, find much more accurate levels and uh, see inside my candlesticks, if you like, and see the actual trans transactions that are taking place between buyers and sellers uh, and how I can use that to my advantage over the usual retail crowd. But um, anyway, with all that said, let's just jump into this analysis and uh, see if you can try and understand a bit uh, as to my logic for taking the trade. So um, you can see my positions there, positions, positions, positions. So these are my running positions. I will be closing some of these out shortly. Now they're in really good profit. But um, let me just go on to my other screen. And I'll pull across this chart here. And this chart is a monthly market profile chart. And I've currently got them set as 240 minutes of four hour blocks. So each one of these blocks here represents a four hour candle and I set this chart out with these lines in such a way that allows me to navigate the market a bit better but this is like your higher time frame chart if you like I just wanted to get a bigger picture as to what is going on um, so we can see this week sorry last week and this week we have basically been auctioning up higher so just completely grinding on up towards prior month's high, which is there. So knowing yesterday that we're coming into the prior month's high, I looked to see if I could find an area somewhere around here where we might find limit orders and these investors that previously got short here last month would be looking to defend their positions and get short again, because there's probably going to be, as I say, limit orders sitting there. So this is the first thing I looked at. If you're a smart money concept trader, you would have been looking at this and identifying this as an order block at the prior month's high, the last up move before the move down. So that's what, smart money concept traders would have probably been highlighting but that's the only information you've got that we need a lot more information in order to know that we've got a validated trade so this was my first step into expecting the reversal so we'll get rid of this chart now <clears throat> and what i'll do is Pull this one across here for the time being. Pull this one across here. Let's make this chart bigger. Right, so we're now on the daily market profile. 
And this is where I got positioned yesterday. There, and I also got positioned today. So this is yesterday's trading session. This is today's trading session, which hasn't finished yet. And so I've got positions in there. I think I've possibly got a position there this morning and I took some profits down here on some positions. I then added some more here, some more here, and there we go. And you can see this line, which is called a value area, got respected to the pip, which is why I drew my green box there because that was an area of interest. This green box here, I'll zoom across to the 25, 20, 50. So I could see it's auctioned up yesterday. I had seen this line here, which is a prior significant naked point of control that had got traded through and then rejected. So that was an area of interest for me. Plus, we had a little volume cluster there as well. So I drew, drew a green box there. I'd had also highlighted uh, a green box, which I drew there, which is the high, in case we traded a bit higher. Thinking if we did trade sort of 10, 12 pips higher, we might do a liquidity sweep on that prior high there and then reject. But this was my main area of interest because I had other confluences, which I'll get into as well. So this was just step two. So I'm building a picture as to what could be going on. So I drew out my zones there. As you can see, we respected it there pretty much to the pip. I started rejecting. But I need more information. So let me just pull this chart across. This is a custom session profile chart. So it's a bit like doing a top-down analysis if you were a smart money trader or whatever. And I drew out another box here, this green box. And you can see this was yesterday's profile. If I open that out for you. See, we auctioned on up and then rejected. Now let me just... Uh, Scroll across to the, and you can see here my zone of interest at this high is where this line was, and also I took it to the edge of this ledge. Don't worry if you're new to all this and you don't know what I'm going on about. If you decide you want to learn, it's all in the course. Um, I do have a video course, it's about 13 or 14 hours long, which goes really in depth into everything that we cover, every aspect of our trading. Um, and by the end of it, you will literally be transformed into a trading the way that we do and finding these killer areas of interest. And uh, I guarantee you'll be blown away, basically, what you've been trading with with your retail stuff doesn't compare isn't a patch on what these tools are these have took me oh goodness me i've been trading 14 years and i reckon these these particular charts i've been working on for the last seven or eight years refining them um making custom studies to find the best areas of uh influence and they can be used on any asset as well i should hasten to add so I trade mainly Great British Pound US dollar because that's all I need to trade to make a living. But you can use them on any other instrument, gold, um, S&P 500, uh, the NASDAQ, anything you want. Um, but it's all covered in the course anyway. So, yeah, anyway, this, so this was another area of interest for me. So I'm narrowing it down even more to a tighter entry. So we've got the monthly, the daily, and now we've got this, this chart here as well. So I drew out that area of interest, simply just waited for price to come up there to see what was going on. And as you can see, came up into the area and rejected. I also had a 
another chart as well. Uh, oh, sorry, that's a morning chart. We don't want that one yet. I also had another custom chart as well, which again, I could narrow it down even more. And we can see again, that little line there with that red line, which is a POC. So a POC and a value area. Very interested in that. And as you can see, we came right up into it. Pretty much pick perfect. This is how insanely accurate these charts are. And then we rejected. Let me just open up that profile so you can see. So yeah. Into that area, rejected, and then sold right up. So I had that chart as well. So hopefully you're beginning to see now how I've got a massive advantage over the people that just trade naked candlesticks. Um, so that enabled me to get my initial positions in. I also had some other charts. Uh, this is a VWAP chart and we had been hugging the deviation to extremes. We then got this signal to show that there is absorption taking place and exhaustion. This tail here showing me there was absorption. So aggressive buying got absorbed by passive sellers. So, and the same happened again today, where I added some more positions, and again there. But again, this is all covered in depth in the course. So that enabled me as well to get positioned. Then this morning, same thing applies. We opened here this morning at Frankfurt. I was expecting a bit of a pullback, but I did put one position in here and was, so I already had some running higher up. We opened here, I added a position, only looking for a, 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 a slight scalp, if you like, uh, down towards London Open, because I was expecting a pullback in London. And uh, my stop losses would have been, so I entered here, stop losses would have been above this area here because I was expecting this to come up into this area and then reject. So I entered here, took profits on some, some positions down there and then waited for us to come back up into this area of interest again. And I scaled in more positions, which you just saw right at the beginning of this video when I showed you my positioning. Um, so I scaled in some more positions again with a view to us trading lower. As you can see, we rejected from there straight away. So that was this morning using this chart for confluence for scaling in positions. If you hadn't got in yesterday, you could have got your positions in this morning. And then this afternoon, so this was yesterday, what I've just spoken to you about already, where I've got my first positions in. And then this afternoon, the chart opened. I had this as an area of interest. Again, we came down, pulled back into this area of interest. And that's where I scaled in more positions again. And look, you can see once again, those lines were pretty much pip perfect. These are all generated with my software and how I set up studies. They're not industry standard settings that I use. These are all custom settings, which I've refined over the years. And that allows me to find these really tight areas of interest. So that's what that chart looked like. Now, there were some other charts as well, which I'm not prepared to talk about on this video because they are proper secret charts, which I only share in my mentorship and course. Um, so I don't really want them out in the public domain because I spent so many years refining them and they're just for my students to use. So there were extra confluences on top of that as well. But this was enough to be going by as it is. Just we've got multiple confluences just there. Um, also, we can see, I'll just touch on this a little bit, the footprint chart. 
So we can see what's taking place within each candlestick. So again, if you're new to this, you basically got, um, you could say buyers and sellers. That's what textbooks say, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, when you start understanding order flow better, you'll know that that's not just buyers on the right hand side, but that's also um, passive sellers as well. Um, but again, I go into this very in depth in the video course. Um, that's not to be talked about on this video, but I used the footprint chart to help add extra confluence for scaling in my positions. Um, we'll just take this as an example for one of my scalings today, this afternoon. I could see these green numbers as called delta, that's positive delta. So we can see there's a lot of buying coming into the area of interest, which would have been that level I just showed you on one of my charts. And we're also within these gray bands, which are called deviation bands. And again, these are extreme deviations from the VWAP. So I could see aggressive buying coming into the area of interest, a pickup in volume, which is what these numbers are, these gray numbers. So increase in volume, increase in buying into the area of interest. I could then see absorption was taking place. We've got aggressive buying here and price not wanting to go higher. We then started selling off and this was absorption where the limit orders started getting filled and the market then started auctioning lower. Again, there's more to it than that, but I'm just trying to give you a brief overview as to uh, how these charts work and how I look at them in order to help make my decisions in trading. And as you can see, we then just auctioned on down and we're still currently auctioning down. That's called a footprint chart. And finally, I'll just quickly pull over this chart. So that footprint chart that I just showed you was this position here. At that black line. And then this is called the VWAP chart. And as I already spoke about earlier on in this video, we also done up into my points of interest. You can see we had depth distortion, <clears throat> excuse me, absorption taking place, um, got my positions in. And same again this morning in London, same again this afternoon in New York. Plus uh, we're rejecting from the weeks and VWAP as well. And now we're just auctioning lower. Going to take some profits on majority of my positions now, and I'll just leave one running because I do expect the pullback and then maybe us to fall a bit lower down. But um, hopefully this brief talk through of my analysis and what I was looking for on the charts in order to take all these positions and scaling positions, hopefully that sort of gives you a slight insight into my world of trading and how I use these tools to my advantage and uh, if you'd like to learn more about these tools and how they can help you, then um, somewhere on this video, below this video, wherever, whatever, there's going to be a link for you to uh, be able to click if you want to. And you can contact myself or my colleague, Darren, and uh, book a call with us. And uh, you can learn more about what we've got to offer and how these tools can help you uh, improve your trading. All right, nice one. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next video.